Okay guys, I'm going to be talking about three ways that I make myself happier. These probably will work for you because they're very subjective, but they're also fundamentally correct. These are things that will make you happier as a person. Before we get into this, please click the notification bell, subscribe, leave a like, and let's get on with the video. Alright, so I thought I'd make this video about happiness. And I didn't want this to be an instructional video because I don't really think I'm enough of a... I'm not really experienced in advice in general. I'm not a life guru or a life coach or anything like that. So I didn't want this to be like, you must do this in order to feel happier. I thought I'd do a more personal, subjective video where I just share how I make myself feel happier if I'm feeling down. And then hopefully if you, you know, if you're feeling down or if you're not feeling happy for whatever reason, then maybe you can try some of these things and they might work for you. They might not, you know, it depends on what is gonna work for each person. So when I'm feeling down or sort of not really depressed as such, but when I'm feeling sad or not as happy as I usually am, it's usually for one of a few reasons. It's either I'm not sleeping enough, I'm not eating right, or I'm not doing the things that I know make me happy. It's usually one or a mixture of those things. There are exceptions to those three things, like for example, if there's illness in the family or if you're having an argument with a partner, these things obviously make me sad as well. But in general, the, the main times I feel down or sad are when those three things happen, right? Let's just break them down. So the first one, sleep, right? It's very important, probably more important than any other health-related thing you could do to get enough sleep and to get high enough quality of sleep. I've always found that when I sleep well, I feel better. Everything else becomes easier. I've heard it being called a force multiplier, meaning that, say if you're trying to write a book, yeah, it might help to learn how to touch type. It might help to plan it out on post-it notes and it might help to talk to other writers who have also done the same thing. But all of that is gonna become easier if you just sleep enough and sleep well, because you'll be mentally ready and alert to actually do those things. So it's a force multiplier. Whatever you want to do or achieve, having enough sleep, I've always found makes those things easier. So yeah, I always try and focus on sleeping better, whether that's you know going to bed and waking up at the same time, eliminating distractions before bed, like for example, turning off screens. I have a routine I go through every night where I, I do a bit of reading, a little bit of studying, and I'll meditate. And I found that this routine in the evening helps me to unwind and helps to increase melatonin production, which is the the hormone of darkness, you know, you may have heard this before, it's the hormone that gets released throughout the day up to the point where it sends you to sleep because you're tired enough, right? But then if you keep looking at screens before bed, that actually stops the production of melatonin, meaning you don't fall asleep as well or as fast. So in a nutshell, I always try and eliminate screens before bed so that I don't feel too, you know, engaged and awake to actually fall asleep. So there's that, there's a the sleep thing. Then there is the eating. Now I've been plant-based since about a year ago, maybe slightly less or more, I can't remember the exact dates, but I found that when I eat plant-based, obviously everything has improved anyway, but there are still stipulations within that. So you can be plant-based or vegan and still have a bad diet. You know, it, there's no black and white here. Like you can have vegans who literally only eat chips. And that's obviously a very bad diet because it's not diverse, it doesn't give you the nutrients and the vitamins you need, and it's kind of boring and it doesn't really fuel you in a way that's gonna give you sustained energy throughout the day. I'm not gonna to go too much into the glycemic index and how foods affect your blood sugar levels, but in a nutshell, you should aim to have a consistent, I always try and have a consistent level of energy throughout the day, instead of that's a giant plane just decided to fly by right in the middle of my video. So I always try and aim to have a consistent supply of energy throughout the day. Instead of having one big meal in lunchtime, for example, where you have lots of carbs and you stuff it all down and then after that meal, for a couple of hours after you feel sluggish and tired and you just want to sleep, you just want to curl up and sleep, right? This is because the sugar, I guess you could say, the glucose or the energy, the carbohydrates in that food are quickly being absorbed by your body so fast that you can't really deal with it. So your body secretes insulin, which is to counteract the sugar, and a side effect of that is you feel tired. Now, I don't wanna get into the biology of this in detail, but long story short, I always try and aim to mix carbohydrates with proteins and fats in almost every meal, so that you don't get that burst of energy and then that crash. It's more of a slow release energy, meaning I'm awake and alert throughout the whole day. So one of the reasons that I sometimes feel sad or not myself is because I might have a slip 
a slip up day where I just don't really think about that or maybe I go out to have dinner somewhere outside and there isn't that choice of meal or you know maybe I choose something bad or wrong you know everyone has cheat days don't they so that's one of the things that's that's one problem that's the food problem and then there's obviously the third thing which is when I'm not doing the things I know make me happy an example of this is rock climbing I've always loved rock climbing but for some reason over the last year or two years maybe more I haven't done it as much as I should have done in fact I've hardly done it at all um, and if you've been watching these vlogs you know that I've been recently getting back into it and training for it and going to the the, uh, the classes and everything but when I wasn't doing it I always felt like there was something missing you know I felt like I I knew I wanted to rock climb but for some reason I just didn't do it and maybe that's laziness maybe that's just the habit of not doing it regularly but whatever the case is now that I'm back into it I feel so much happier and more fulfilled because it's what I love doing and you know I've always tried to center my life around what I like and enjoy doing because otherwise what's the point there's that really famous Alan Watts video of um, where he talked about what would you do if money was no object and he basically says that if you don't do what you love doing you're just going to be doing things you hate doing in order to make more money to support yourself to go on doing things you hate doing and it's just like a vicious cycle that goes all the way up until you're 80 or 90 years old and it's just a waste of time so whenever I, the, the third reason that I sometimes feel sad is that I'm, maybe I'm just not focusing on what I like doing maybe I'm too absorbed in maybe I'm binging a Netflix series or something or it's something that distracts me from what I actually enjoy doing which is flying drones climbing making videos and writing blog posts those things are what I enjoy doing most obviously traveling is a big one as well and so whenever I feel sad I always do a sort of check where I ask myself okay well, what am I doing with my time how am I spending my life right now or you know in the last week in the last month and usually if I'm feeling sad it's because I'm not doing those things that I like doing so I just go back to doing those things it's very simple you just choose to think better thoughts you just choose to do the things that you like doing it's really quite simple when you break it down like that anyway this video has gone on quite a long time this is just my subjective opinion obviously I'm not a guru here I'm not saying that anything like that it's my subjective opinion on how to be happier this is how I this is how I make myself happier and this is how I think it could work for you obviously try it out but these are these are fairly basic things I, I can't imagine anyone would have any counter argument for these because they're fundamental like everybody knows really deep down that if you eat better you'll feel better if you sleep better you'll feel better and if you do the things you love doing it's hard to not feel happy right so hopefully you've enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe done